When you talk to people who are taking the guidance from on high, listening to the encyclicals and the oracles and such, they will often say, well, I can't see into the future, can I? I wouldn't, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just, I'm just going to have to do whatever they tell me to do at some level. And usually they won't say it quite that clearly because that sounds too much like they're following, like they're acting like sheep, but it is in fact what they're doing. And um, there really does seem to be a belief among those who, many of those um, specifically who have no background in science, that predicting the future is akin to magic. Like you, there, is, there is no knowing what's coming, is there? And of course, predicting the future is exactly what scientists do. Mm-hmm. You know, not globally necessarily, you know, within some, within some within a domain. confined domain that they have established as this is the observation that I made that I'm now trying to explain. And I've got these hypotheses that I've generated, and now I'm figuring out which of the predictions, what predictions I can formulate for each hypothesis that, if true, must demonstrate that that hypothesis is false. <clears throat> that is a form of predicting the future. And when people say, well, I, can't, I couldn't possibly know what's going to happen next, can I? You think, well, maybe you should either start honing that skill yourself, or at the very least, start thinking about who among the people whom you could be listening to seem to have that skill and maybe pay them more heed than those who consistently get it wrong. Because the CDC seems to be playing the role of of the oracle, of the encyclical, of the that organization that will make the future better than the past. And yet they are doing it wrong over and over and over again. Throw them out. Stop listening to them. Well, I want to uh, make one further point that you could spot this uh, as it emerged based on one unavoidable tell. Science, even when done beautifully by people who are really committed to the search for truth above all else, is messy, right? As it emerges, there is always conflict over interpretation of a particular result. There is always the revelation that certain results don't mean what they appear to mean because the methodology used was not robust. There's all sorts of noise. And so the point is, what we, when we say science, we mean a bunch of different things. Mm-hmm. To the extent that we sometimes mean that which science has discovered, right? Mm-hmm. That is one legitimate use of the term science. We do not mean what did it discover this morning. We mean what that it has yes. discovered has stood up well enough that when you build it into a model, you get smarter and not dumber, mm-hmm. right? Now, my point about the CDC and everything that functions as a part of that pseudo church is there was no process, right? The process that would have been necessary for them to arrive at conclusions that were worth anything at all would have been a process of discussion. There would have been Mm -hmm. evidence that did have noise and conflict. And instead, what we were done, what what was done was we were assured that that process had taken place privately by companies with a conflict of interest that the evidence that came out of it was very very clear and that we would know that as soon as we were able to see it 75 years from now right they tried (laughs) to hide the freaking evidence and the point was well do you really have a process that's trustworthy because it sounds like maybe you don't and you just want to tell us the prescription that comes out of it well there's another piece of this i mean we could we could go on forever here but there's another piece of this too which is the sense among the elites, and as, as again, longtime listeners will know, neither you nor I like the idea of the elites. Right? The, it, it is, the elite is trotted out as a way to shut people up. We are the elite. We know what we're doing. The elite have, you know, there's a special process by which you can enter the elite, and then you earn the right to make decisions for those who are not elite is, is part of what the, the unspoken agreement is. And the elites really have gotten used to being able to say, don't worry about it. We did the work. You don't need to see our work. Here's our conclusion. Accept our conclusion. Sit down. Shut up. Take the jab. It came from a 
frozen ferret badger steak, you know, it, natural immunity isn't any good, none of these pre-existing treatments will help you, just take our word for it. We are the ones with the lab coats and the fancy credentials, and we went to all the best schools, and we know all the right people, we go to all the right parties, and if you don't believe us, well, that's on you. And also, we're not going to actually let you make that decision for yourself. So this is, this is a kind of, again, hubris that we find in every domain, in journalism, in academia, in politics, in every domain. But we, fa we saw this, and I, you know, I'm sure we saw this long before that, but I remember running into this attitude at a very non-elite institution at Evergreen, where many of our colleagues treated students like this. You don't want to see how the work is done. I'm just going to give you the conclusion so that you can go on your merry way. And if there is a place where that has, if, if, if there is any place where that kind of attitude should have no place at all, it's education. Education is exactly where everyone who showed up should be able to get their hands as dirty as they want to get them. But one of the things I think that many people have learned in the last two and a half years in, uh, with regard to COVID is a lot of people, a lot of people are a lot more willing than most of the so-called elites are willing to give them credit for to try to figure out what is true and what is best for them and their families on their own. And they are done taking so-called elite authorities at their word that they actually have their best interests in mind. Because most people are actually capable of thinking for themselves and want to do so. <coughs> Which goes to the other, the other tell. <clears throat> at the beginning of the pandemic, Actually, when you and I started doing the Dark Horse live streams, mm -hmm. we were fascinated to be looking into the preprint literature, the non-peer-reviewed literature, yeah. right? That literature was vibrant. It was noisy as hell as it was, it was bound to be. It's been through no process other than, uh, you know, uh, something about what captures your attention because it's being discussed or something along those lines. You know, and m most of the work was... Maybe not high enough tech, but like re required enough of an infrastructure so that it wasn't just randos on the street going like, I'm going to throw something up on the preprint right. server, right? It was people, <clears throat> people with labs, people with experience, people with some history working with viruses or pandemics or, you know, so, yeah. you know, so it was professionals, yeah. but their work had not individually been put through a process. Right. <clears throat> the point is what was high in that milieu? What was high? Transparency. Yeah. Right. Not perfect. You don't know that people sure. didn't, uh, you know, fraudulently write these papers based on no experiment that had actually been run. Yep. But the point was, it wasn't some hidden selection process. Right. Then you institute peer review. Right. The, the, the pros catch up and peer review gets back on its feet and it starts controlling what you see of what was done. Mm -hmm. There are weird reversals, papers that have been accepted for publication being unaccepted, yes. <clears throat> right? The process has become a whole bunch more opaque. And then there's the level of opaque at the CDC, which is effectively total. We're not going to tell you how we came to this. Mm -hmm. We're going to tell you that it's evidence-based, mm -hmm. right? And so I guess what I would say is the very nature of this process is that there has, because of the noise that is inherent to the generation of actual evidence in, in complex systems, there would have to be a process. You would have to see evidence of that process to have any confidence that it took place. Because otherwise, if you can pretend that there was a process and then just hand down its supposedly evidence-based conclusion, then a cheater will do that because it's obviously the right, it's the, the, the efficient thing to do with respect to getting people's behavior to change without um, you know, bothering to deal with the conflict between what you're telling them to do and the actual universe. Yes, that's right. Good. Terrible, but good. <laughs> Terrible, but good. 